right guys welcome back to another m crater lore tutorial well it's not a tutorial but it's more of like a um inspirational series where i do stuff to kind of show off m crater what it's possible of uh today what we're going to be working on is basically making a system for the the actual tilled soil and we're going to be putting together a system for soil composition. Uh, I will go into a little bit at the end of the video of what my plans are for the crops and what I've basically worked out through research for actual real crops and stuff. Uh, one of the important things of actually doing anything is actually to see if they try to build it off of existing things, whether it's real life mechanics like how crops actually grow or if it's uh, something that you've seen somewhere in another game, it's always a great idea to um, get some sort of foundation from it and then expand on it later and then convert it into something that can work for you. Uh, for example, um, there's this game that I recently started playing uh, that will um, has this really realistic crop, uh, crop growth and everything like that. It's... Um, Farthest Frontier. I might end up doing a series on the gaming channel and the future on it. It's uh, pretty well def refined, uh, even in early access right now. And um, their crop mechanics is, like, amazing. So that's actually started my research into how crops actually grow. And it's not too much different than how they had it set up in that game. Uh, there is a soil composition, fer fertileness, and there's a whole bunch of other stuff um, that uh, can be taken into account. So I started building a document for basically going and trying to see what I can get. Uh, there's some things that are on plant side, some things are on soil side. We're working on the soil at the moment because it's a little bit needs to be done before we can start moving on to the other stuff. But... Um, at the moment, what I wanted to do was just kind of get that all set set up so we could slowly integrate things. Now, currently what I'm working on now is basically getting a um, procedure or a, proceed, a tag set up so we can basically go ahead and uh, target uh, any item that is a uh, sand block and then we can basically have more mods tap into this resource and I've set the tag type to mod so it will basically use our mod namespace and then what I'm doing is I'm just making one for the clay as well so we will be using the clay to make it a different kind of mixture more clay equals uh, more so more moisture retention where sand basically lets things go through certain plants require a certain range generally uh, for example, rice is actually a plant that requires a lot of retention where, you know, something like uh, corn or something might not require as much. I haven't looked into corn just yet, but I'm, I would imagine it's less than rice. So uh, after I've done that, I just basically needed to set up the namespace uh, for the thing. And I thought, okay, maybe we could do um, set up the... Uh, uh, like a tag system so we could do this you know I wouldn't mind actually refining some of these properties later on and running return statements so we don't need to be like update as much of things in this mod because it's going to get really big I know that it's going to get big and it's never a bad idea to plan for the future um, I'm not sure how many elements we're currently at at the moment but it's getting pretty high so having a a um, lot more uh, area where we can. Now I could just do that, but uh, I was thinking about um, the the sand, sand block and right clicking on the block and stuff like that. And I think it's going to be best if we were to make this a global uh, trigger and then that way we can cancel the event for when the sand is placed. And that way uh, what we can do is we can make sure that the um, 
block isn't placed when we right click on the soil rather than it can be removed. So we'll have to update the procedures for every tilled soil, but other than that, it won't be too hard to do. And uh, we can just specify the block uh, that we want to basically right click on. And we're gonna set that as a tag. And then we're going to go ahead and just fix up some of these uh, actions. Like for the first one, I want to set the main hand item and then we're going to go ahead and subtract this by one and then what we want is get the number of items in our main hand and then, then we can do that again. So we're going to run that first before we actually go ahead and run the, um, the MBT part for the mixture and I'm going to cancel out the procedure. You might have noticed that this trigger has something called cancel so we can cancel the event. Uh, when we right click with sand so that will be a lot better and I'm going to run this on server side uh, mainly because I want to well it's a server side procedure but it will also make sure that there's no bugs um, because if there's anything that does run on client side all right so now this procedure is set up um, all I need to do is make the tag for this I'm going to put that tag right here and we're just going to tidy it up a little bit so we can set that up uh, for that. And then we're going to call it um, block. And then we're, we can just remove that part. And then we'll set the mixture or the uh, blocks. And we're going to set all our um, tilled soil uh, for all of those things in this tag. So that will make it a lot easier for doing it rather than specifying each block. And then what we can start doing is going into our tilled soil and then we need to update quite literally every one of these procedures and stuff. So we can basically remove the, um, the right click event. So that's basically what I did. I removed the right click event, but I also remembered that we need a couple things in this procedure. Um, I kept forgetting over the last couple times, but I wanted to deal damage every time to the item that uh, we right click on the ground with, uh, for example, to uh, tend to the soil and stuff like that. So for example, um, when we hoe the soil, when there's weeds, then it will basically clean up the soil. When we use a shovel, then it will also deal damage. So in game, I wanted to quickly test uh, how everything worked. So basically the soils like that. Um, and then I had to figure out how to get the weeds set up. And it's a lot more difficult than I thought because I had to switch it back and forth between multiple times. I really should just make a um, quick structure or something so I can basically have a thing set up so I can just basically um, automate this process. I did it in one of the tutorials, well not really tutorials, but the uh, videos prior that automated it really quickly and it worked really well. But um, yeah, I just didn't have the time or to set one up. Anyhow, that's basically what I did. I was just like toggling it on and off. And I was, took a look at the blocks data and we had about seven more times for the weeds. 14 more times for the rocks so um, it does take a little bit of time for the weeds and stuff to grow this is kind of deliberate because I don't want it to be um, overly um, hard to grow the crops but I also want a reasonable time for the crops to kind of grow and stuff like that um, I also want to make sure that, you know, like each stage, like this is like how many days, a lot of days, right? If people want to leave the soil unattended to for the next harvest, maybe that there's a seasonal change or something, they only have a certain time period to get it done in, then they can do that at a lower yield and then they can tend to the crops at a later date. So basically that's kind of what I was going for for this. Um, I'm not sure how the seasons are going to work just yet. Most likely they're going to be variable based. Um, I might use something uh, from ad support for um, Sceneric seasons. I think that's how it's uh, 
or I can't remember the mod name exactly. I, I haven't been able to pronounce it just properly, but it's a, a mod that allow has command based and I've used it in the real time mod. So I might add support for that. And then we can basically use the same system that real time mod does. And we can link into the system that way. Um, and if real time's mods installed already, we can already, we can just disable that part and let real time mod take over for it, I guess. Um, but I needed to get the rocks all set up. So I'm going to cut back in when I get that. All right. So the rocks are already set up now. And all I need to do is basically right click with a hoe and the shovel. And in creative, it doesn't do any damage, so that's perfect. Let's go into survival. And it does do damage to the items, exactly what I wanted it to happen. So looking at the um, the block itself, we're going to look at what kind of uh, data it has. And it's actually missing what data we need for it. So we're going to go ahead and... Um, I think I went and grabbed some clay and some sand, if I remember correctly. I just kind of punched it. I don't know why I was punching it. I mean, I had a shovel on me. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, sometimes I, I just kind of do what's available and what I can think of. Uh, but there's some clay over here that we can grab. And then I'm like, oh, yeah, shovel. <laughs> I can grab the shovel. So we'll grab the clay and then we'll grab a couple more pieces of sand just for testing purposes. And then we can go back to our farmland and we'll just test to see if um, the right click event and everything works. So well, I'm trying to right click with the clay, it wasn't doing anything. And then I right click with the sand and I just wanted to take a look at what the value is for this one and it brought it up to one. So I don't really want it to do that per se. Uh, I want it to kind of start off in the middle uh, range for uh, the the actual value. So we'll, we'll change that up quickly. Uh, we need to set a default value when the block is hoed. So we can basically make that a, um, its own properties and stuff. We can even randomize that later on if we want to. But uh, what we need to do right now is we're going to um, actually, I think what we need to do is go to the um, procedure for the uh, fertile soil where we're turning it into uh, the soil itself. And we need to get the value for our mixture and we're going to set the default to five. So we can randomize that number later on if we want to, and we can set a range or whatever, but uh, at the moment it's going to be five, a static number. And then what we can do is go ahead and test it again. I'm just gonna break this block and then we can place that back down to the soil. And then we'll test the data before we do anything of that block and it's set to five at the moment so that's perfect and then what we can do is we can go ahead and just right click with our clay and it wasn't doing anything at that point and it says the soil mixture is two so i think i, I think i set up the uh, procedure a little bit wrong uh for adding that extra one so what i'm going to do is fix that up quickly but uh, the sand increases it, so it's perfect. All right, so um, moving on to what my plans are for the crops. I have like an entire kind of uh, sheet painted out here. And I have kind of just some general ideas and stuff of the mechanics, how everything's going to work. Uh, for example, seasons, uh, it's going to play a role into you know, when the crops are going to um, be best grown. Uh, there's the crop failures, uh, seasons, again, uh, freezing, cool, warm, hot. And then there's um, like kind of a scale of how that's going to affect the crops. Uh, for example, it might have a certain range where it would be best in. And then we have uh, yield. So it controls fertility, ro weeds, rockiness, soil composition, 
Uh, disease is actually going to be based on the crop itself. So I noticed that a lot of crops have specific diseases and it's just best. So uh, like fertility, uh, growing some plants, uh, compost that can basically increase the fertility. Um, I'm not sure exactly if it's going to decrease over time. Most likely it will. Um, and then there's the burst base biome fertilizer and a bunch of other things like weeds also decrease yield. So do rocks. Uh, soil composition can actually affect the rocks or the, um, the actual plants themselves. There'll be a certain range where they're going to be best grown in. So for example, um, clay, and then you can kind of see the diagram on the side here. There's like a green spot where it's perfect. You'll get a really good impact for the yield. Yellow will have no impact and then red will be like a mild impact or negative impact for the actual crops. So that's generally how crops work in, in that game that I was talking about, Farthest Frontier. And then the crops themselves, they have a bunch of other stuff that needs to be added to. I have a separate document for the rice that um, I've basically gone over, but some of the diseases here are like grain rot and um, brown spot, I think it is. Yeah, brown spot, which are a couple diseases for rice themselves. So yeah, there's a lot of information to take in. I'm trying to build the mechanics based on this the best that I can and um, bring it into M Crater and stuff. So there is an end goal for what I'm working on. Um, I had some questions about, you know, why am I adding vanilla blocks and stuff like that? Uh, it's because I need specific mechanics and it doesn't really fit in with the biome or the dimension uh, with the vanilla blocks themselves. So I wanted to make sure that everything kind of is consistent. That's why I'm adding certain blocks and stuff that, you know, would probably be vanilla. But um, in this case, I needed clay and clay to actually make the um, soil uh, mixture. So that's basically why I added clay itself. But um, outside of that, um, yeah, there's not too much uh, stuff to do for the, f the soil itself, uh, left. We just need fer fertileness and, um, that, that, that should be pretty easy mechanics to actually set up. Uh, we will, I will tweak a couple of the things in the soil composition just to fix a couple of the issues, but that's all the time that I have for today. If you are new to my channel, don't forget to subscribe, comment down below, rate the video, and I hope you enjoyed today's video. Thanks for watching. Peace out.